You look really confident out there. How do you feel today? Um, I feel good. Just a little sore, you know. Fighting Brazilians have been uh, a daily thing for me now that I'm on the Black Zillions team. So um, I expected a, a tough guy. Um, but like I said, I have a team full of amazing grapplers, a lot of black belts. So I'm constantly defending chokes and, and on bars and triangles. So I went in very confident tonight. Um, the, the only thing I had to do was take a step back and slow my pace but still be aggressive. Um, I think in the Lozon fight, I was too aggressive too early. And then in the Jim Miller fight, I wasn't aggressive enough, and I let him off the hook. So I wanted, I took those two fights, and I've been studying those two fights for the last few months. And I wanted to take this fight and kind of pace myself and put measure, make my measuring stick right in the middle. And I think I was successful in that area by going out, being able to attack the guy, but take my time and in bad situations be able to get out before he can sink anything in tight. So. Um, my uh, jiu-jitsu coach, George Sant uh, Santiago, he's definitely happy with me right now. Um, I know Coach Flavia is back home is happy too, so um, I came in and just did my job. Do you feel like you were fighting to save your job? Man, you know what? In this business, um, you know, I've been in the UFC successfully now seven years in a row. Um, this is my seventh win on the 4th of July. I'm undefeated on the 4th. I think this is my fight card that I show up for the most. But it was in the back of my mind that um, with another loss, I probably can lose my job. You know, this this is my childhood dream as, as a 14-year-old kid. I always wanted to be in the UFC. And um, I don't think I would be one of those fighters who get cut from the UFC and fight elsewhere. So I definitely always feel like my job's on the line. But I think that's a good thing for me because it makes me, it makes me work that much harder so that I don't lose my job. But um, I never fight safe. You know, I, I still wanted to finish that fight. I'm upset that I didn't finish. But um, whoever I fight next, man, I feel sorry for him. Melvin, it got really hairy at the end of round one for you. You know, you were mounted, and then all of a sudden you slipped out. You land a big shot. Do you feel like that that turned the tide, or really secured a, a real dominant position for you for the rest um, of the fight after that? Yeah, I mean, I, I had to give up the mount. It was either give up the mount or let him take my back fully. And and in practice, you know, I, I'll give up. The, I'll take the mount any day. You know, I'll give up the mount b besides. Um, taking my back you know a cold word was don't drop the soap tonight so uh, it really was so uh, all I could think was don't drop the soap and just keep my back to the mat and just keep him off me when he mounted me my mount escapes are always have been good so I was definitely comfortable in that situation other than him being on my back and then um, he dropped a couple of big shots but they all hit me in the arms none of them got through even the elbow I swear to it none of them landed and then when he set up to take a deep breath that's when I bucked him off me so it's all like jujitsu is very tricky man it's like you can move but sometimes you move too much and think guys sink things in tighter so I wanted to wait till I felt I had an opening and then and then go for my escape do you feel like the Flexillians camp has rejuvenated your career since you've been with them uh, since January or so man you know um I go back and forth about camps, and I, I do miss Coach Greg them a lot. I miss those guys all the time, and um, sometimes in the beginning I felt like I shouldn't have left, you know, especially with coming off of two losses, you know, when leaving. Um, but I, I definitely found my home with the Black Zillions, and um, I have a um, tremendous amount, amount of respect for all my training partners. Um, definitely a whole lot of Brazilians, you know. Um, <laughs> but, you know, that's always been my Achilles heel. That's always been the things that set me back from being a champion. And to be able to now go into a gym every day and work with world-class black belts who um, didn't get their belts in the mail, um, it's a humbling experience. And um, I have my first Gi and No Gi Naga tournament in two weeks in Orlando that I'm going to go home to on Monday and get ready for. And uh, I'm excited about that next, you know, and uh, we'll see what happens next. Maybe if I start submitting guys, they might start giving me more strikers. So specifically, were you working with Jay-Z Cavalcante? Yes, I work with Jay-Z, uh, Yuri, George Santiago, Puga. Um, the list goes on. Coach Flavius has been a tremendous help. Um, Coach Marcone. So, I mean, the whole team, man, everybody that's there, we all one big family. Um, but the person that holds the family together is Glenn Robinson, man. I have an amazing agent. He put together a world-renowned team. We have a phenomenal gym. Some of you guys should come check it out. And um, we all we all in there just grinding, man. Everybody wants to be a champion, and that's my dream, man, and that's part of my legacy. So it's up to me to fulfill that. Nobody can do it for me. Did you have a chance to work with the great Mario Sperry? Yes, he yes. He was actually going to corner me tonight, but um, yeah, um, he... You know, he hangs out with the Sheik, 
you know, of Abu Dhabi. So he hasn't been there in the last maybe two or three weeks. And he just he's, he just got back to camp yesterday to help some, some of the guys back home. Uh, I wish he would have been here, but um, I do get to work with him often. And um, he's an amazing uh, MMA coach. I'm talking about all the way around MMA coach. He's one of the most amazing coaches I ever worked with. Suffering from any uh, lagging injuries prior to this fight? No, um, I just have you know slight hand problems sometimes, but that's just from the years of hitting so hard, and there's no way I can get around it. You know, I even I even beg for surgery, and the doctors all tell me the same story. They're like you don't need surgery, it's just they just hurt. So uh, I just got to go stick them down in some ice, and then let my wife kiss on them a little bit, <laughs> and I'll be all right. Is Joe Lozon still what you want next? He fights only in a month. The timing could be right for that, and if so, are you hoping he wins? Yeah, I hope he wins so I can beat him up because, um, you know, I, I did nothing but respect that kid. And, um, you know, I still stand by how I feel about that fight. The only reason he got me was because I rushed myself. Um, if, you know, it's nine out of ten times, that kid, that's the only time he'll win. Um, I definitely, That's definitely a fight I want back. And um, next time around, I won't be so nice about it. I, I definitely won't respect him. Y'all can, y'all get, y'all get to see a little bit of the old Melvin when I fight Joe Lozon again. How does it feel getting the, the warm welcome you got at the weigh-ins? You were one of the biggest uh, crowd favorites, it seemed like. That's because I know how to market myself. You know, um, you know, I, I'm just one of those guys, man. Like, you know, I'm up late signing autographs. I stay in the lobby signing autographs. I skipped the expo this year. It was hard to do, but I stayed in bed all week. I slept. I, don't, I wasn't bothered by the UFC to do interviews. So I was able to rest. I actually took, like, two naps a day. So my wife was very pleased that I was mm -hmm. able to rest. I mean, she was more nervous than I was. And honestly, with the outcome of how the fight went, I was well rested, and I didn't feel tired in the fight. I felt great. And I think because I took the time, you know, I feel like I took a little bit away from my fans, but I also gained something towards my fans in the end by winning. So, you know, I'd rather come in and not go to the expo and show up to fight than to go to the expo and then come up short and then people questioning why was I at the expo all day. So I think staying away from the expo, it was a little tough to do, but um, I'm here till Tuesday, so I get to see as many fans as I want now. Is there any strikers out there in the division that you'd really like to match up with? Because you said, you, of course, you want to get in there with strikers, guys that want to bang. Is there anybody out there that Man, you kind of see, you know, in front Hands of you? down, honestly, and it's not just being – it's not cocky, but – I don't think there's a guy in the UFC in my weight class that can strike with me, honestly. I mean, some of them are great strikers. They're good, but they don't have any power behind their punches. Some of them, it's like slap boxing. You know, I used to do that in my neighborhood. So um, I don't really see a threat in the lightweight division as far as striking goes. Um, but this is not just a kickboxing match. So you always have to be ready for the wrestling and the jiu-jitsu. Um, I think even at this stage in my career, most strikers probably try to submit me instead of strike with me. What's your plans here in Vegas tonight? Do you do anything, have some fun, celebrate? Man, um, I had about 30 friends, couples. Me and my wife um, have a bunch of couples that we hang out with. They actually all made the trip. So um, it was definitely an honor. Like, I was surprised that most of them actually came. So we're all going to go out tonight. I'm definitely going to go to the UFC after party first, um, pay my respects, uh, say hi to the bosses. And then um, I don't really have after party tonight myself. I just kind of hop around. Vegas a little bit, but uh, we're thinking about going to the Green Door. So I don't know if any of you know what that is, but it's a pretty happening club. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much.